Hello everyone, my name is Auro and welcome to the fourth devlog of my second game that will hopefully have a better name soon. In this devlog I'm going to be adding some furniture to my otherwise empty rooms and I will also start replacing my questionable developer art with some actual graphics. Alright, let's begin. To start off the week I decided to code the functionality that will add furniture and other props to the rooms. I don't have the graphics for those yet, but I can already prepare the code for it. Originally, my plan was to just have a bunch of coordinates for each room shape where to place a random prop. But I realized this probably isn't good enough as the props can be big or small. So I decided I will just have two different alternate lists of coordinates and one of those will be chosen randomly and filled with random but appropriate props for that room type. This is fairly easy for me to do and should provide a decent amount of variation so the props are not always the same. There probably would be some elegant and scalable way to solve this that would reduce the manual work but I feel like I'll get off easier and probably save time by just manually setting all the potential locations. I also feel like creating any more complex logic behind this wouldn't be worth it and I also don't want to add colliders to the props for checking any possible overlap. Hopefully my method will be good enough. Let's see when I start adding the actual graphics. While testing the game I noticed a performance issue when there are a lot of rooms on the board. While I don't think focusing on performance is necessarily the best use of my time at this phase of the development, I couldn't help myself and decided to see if I could fix it. I quickly found out that it was happening because of my location checker minions and mostly with the more complex shapes. After some investigating, I realized the issue was that I wasn't clearing the collider shapes of the location checker minions after they had done their job of checking out a location. So their bodies were unnecessarily bulky when they were moving around from one spot to another. The more complex the shape, the slower they were moving. My solution was to put them on a diet, so to speak, by clearing out the shape of their collider after they had checked out their location and done their job. This solved the issue and luckily it was an easy fix. Next, I quickly added some code to easily change the amount of players in the game. Now I don't have to mess with the code every time I want to change the player count. I wanted to change the background next, but I realized I really want to have some real graphics in place before I do that to know what actually looks good. I'll go with this one for now. Or actually, maybe this one. No, let's go with the previous one. It's at least better than the default background. Next, I decided to give the rooms the ability to know what kind of room types they like and what kind of room types they don't like. This ties in with the glow effect I showed in an earlier devlog. So now, when a room is placed next to a room it likes, there's a green glow. If it's placed next to a room it hates, there's a red glow. And if the different effects negate each other, there's a yellow glow. At this point I realized if I want to get the Steam page up fairly soon, I will need to come up with some art for the marketing materials. For Mortal Glory I did all of it myself, but this time since my budget is more relaxed thanks to the success of Mortal Glory, I figured it would be smart for me to find some actual artists to help me with these art assets. I spent Quite a bit of time going through different sites, found a bunch of great artists and ended up contacting a few of them. I'll have to see how it goes, but I am optimistic that they will be able to help me with this task. During this process, I came to the self-realization that I don't really enjoy the whole process of getting artwork for the game. And the issue is solely within myself. There are so many different artists out there that it brings out the perfectionist in me and I easily end up spending ages agonizing over the choice. Like, oh, this guy is good, but I wonder if his style will fit the final version of the game. Maybe I can find someone even better. And then when I get great sketches for the artwork, I will spend way too long thinking about the small details that nobody will even pay attention to. And worst of all, this all doesn't feel like work to me. I know it is work and a required part of the development process for me, but I constantly feel like I am wasting time and that I should get back to coding. So the whole thing feels 
somewhat unpleasant to me, but what got me over most of the discomfort was thinking to myself, I can always improve things later. Let's just get this done for now so we can proceed. I need to keep repeating this to myself. During all of this, I had also been discussing with another artist regarding the art needed within the game. I was able to come to an agreement with him and license some of the existing art that he has been providing for the role-playing community. I was thinking of using his art for the walls and furniture props in the game. Let's start with the walls. The original wall art was in quite a high resolution and I had some issues fitting it in the game as is. But I tested it with different adjustments and I think I found a nice middle ground that looks pleasing. I wanted to keep my options open though and be able to adjust the wall graphics easily later on if needed. I was thinking of how to accomplish this and then I realized that most tile mapping softwares have this functionality. So I created a tile map out of the wall graphics and used this popular software called Tiled to create an arrangement of walls for the different room shapes in my game. Thanks to it, I can get a handy sprite sheet of the walls directly for Unity and I can easily adjust the graphics in a few minutes if needed. Okay, time for the props next. I spent a bit of time creating some automation for resizing and rotating the props and I also created an editor script that will adjust the import settings of all the props and automatically add the props from specific folders to my prop lists. Currently I have three prop lists for each room type, so I didn't want to spend all my time manually managing these lists. I noticed that low resolution versions of the props actually look better in the game when zooming as there aren't so many details to draw on the screen. So I lowered the maximum size of all the prop assets, which led to a problem of many of the props being too large in the game. This was because my code automatically resized the props based on their resolution, and now, when I was capping their resolution in the import settings, the code didn't feel a need to adjust their size. But at the same time, Unity was still treating their unit size based on the original resolution. Luckily, I was able to solve it by adjusting my code so that instead of resolution, it checks the bounds size of each prop. The props still need some work and I still need to change the floors also. I think my main challenge will be to have the room seem natural and pleasing to the eye, even if the props are placed by code. I can foresee potentially having to adjust my approach to placing the props. As a very last solution, I could place all the props manually, but I wouldn't want to go there. I likely won't make any big changes to my prop logic before I get the steam page out. I am hoping everything will look good in the end. I am slightly worried since I would like to show the room details up close and have them look nice, but at the same time, I will want to show a zoomed out view with lots of rooms visible at the same time to get that tactical view. There is also a lot of gameplay information I want to add to the rooms, like their scoring details, what kind of rooms they like as their neighbors, any special functionalities, and so on. I think it will be a tough challenge to have all of this information conveniently available and have all the visuals look clean and pleasing to the eye at the same time. But I will figure out a solution to that when the time comes. And that is where I will end this devlog. As a quick side note, I'm going to introduce a bit of delay to these devlogs around a week or so to give me a bit more flexibility with the editing and putting out these videos while working on the game. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.